Are you all right? Those bandits, they stole all my sake! Sir, you may share some of my sake if you wish. It's the RMT One Year Anniversary Special Start and Shannon Tommy And special guest Ibu The RMT One Year Anniversary Special Hello and welcome to Random Movie Time. Today it's part two of our one year anniversary special. So this week we're going to be looking at a favorite director of Shannon and she's going to explain why she likes that director so much and then we're going to review one of that director's movies. So Shannon, what director did you pick this week? I chose Akira Kurosawa. He is definitely one of my most favorite directors. Um, he has an, a lot to say about the human condition and he's very philosophical. Um, he has, um, a beautiful way of looking at things. Um, and it's interesting because if you look at his background, he was born in 1910 in Japan. He was originally an artist. He was, he was especially taken by the Impressionists, and that was really his passion. Uh, and then he became kind of, in the 20s and 30s, he started uh, becoming more of a Marxist. And you do see that a lot in his film and his sub films and his subject matter, fighting for the little guy, uh, corrupt, fighting against the corrupt state, um, and fighting against the, the westernization of Japan. And this really came about in the, um, in the late forties when the United States of America occupied Japan. And, this is where he started kind of speak, trying to speak out against the westernization of, of Japan. And that really comes through in the subject matter. However, as a filmmaker, he was very inspired by American Westerns and by John Ford uh, in particular. And as I say, he started out as an artist, as, an, as someone who's really influenced by Impressionism. And these influences you can certainly see in his filmmaking style. They're very artistic. Um, the way he edits his films, the way he uses his, his wide-angle lens shots, his close-ups, um, the, the light and the shadow. He is very... He, he approaches filmmaking as a form of art. And he's, he was very involved in all of the whole filmmaking process. So he would be involved in the editing process and the writing. He wrote most of the films that he directed, direction of course. He had um, a crew that he worked regularly with that he built up over the years. Um, and so these are some of the reasons why his films are so well regarded and um, because it was pretty much like a well-oiled machine. The movie I chose to talk about today is Seven Samurai and although it's not my favorite Kurosawa film, my favorite Kurosawa film so far would have to be his 
his very first film, uh, Sanchiro, Sanchiro Sugata, translates as um, Judo Saga. Um, and that is a film where you can really see he, he it, for for his first film. Wow, what a piece of art! So, of course, Kurosawa, growing up in Japan, he there are a lot of Japanese elements in his films. He really uses nature to punctuate a lot of his filmmaking um, because nature is a huge part of Japanese culture. Um, he uses rain scenes a lot for certain moves. Wind is a really big one, especially if there's tension or a big battle or something coming up. And also he uses negative spaces really effectively in film. So by negative spaces, I'm referring to uh, not as much the cinematography or the filmmaking, but to the dialogue. Quietness in the films where it can, it, they can really emote, these actors really emote when they're being quiet. And it's just as much a part of the film as the speech in speeches in the film or the dialogue in the film. It's really important and he really uses that effectively. Even though he, um, a lot of people appreciate his, the action aspects of his films, really that's a really small portion of, of a lot of his films. Really it's about how humans relate to each other and it's about the inner realm of humans and the elder realm, elder realm of humans and how people relate to each other, how the world relates, how nature play, plays. Uh, into it. So these are some of the reasons why I love Akira Kawasawa because he's such a great artist. So Seven Samurai, the film that, that I chose today, getting back to that, it might not be my favorite film, but it's certainly I think his best well-known film in, in uh, Western society. Um, he was a Kurosawa was also in the 40s and the 50s when the Americans were um, censoring the films a lot. There were a lot of things that that uh, Kurosawa could not put in his films um, according to censorship, but he found sneaky little ways of getting around that. Like um, they didn't want the Americans didn't want him uh, putting Western lettering in his films because they thought it would make them the Americans look bad. Um, they didn't want him to um, extol traditional Japanese values because they wanted, but because they wanted them to act Western, even though <laughs> they didn't want the Western lettering of the films. I don't know. <laughs> so, Seven Samurai is one of Kurosawa's, I suppose. Mm, mid to late career films. It was made, it was released in 1954 and famously uh, The Magnificent Seven was based on Seven Samurai. So Seven Samurai tells the tale of a village of farmers who every season are demanded, the, these bandits demand tribute from these farmers every season. And as a result, they starve, 
they don't have enough food for themselves they don't have enough money for themselves to, to live um, so they decide to go out and hire samurai to help protect their village um, and get rid of the bandits and you have to understand kind of the the back the historical context of, of this film because this film takes place in the Sengoku period in Japan in the 16th century when the Japan is not united there's a bunch of civil war going on and there are a lot of samurai clans that are fighting for power and because of that a lot of samurai have lost their masters because they were killed and so these samurai who do not have masters they're called ronin so ronin are basically people who were you know in the samurai men who are in the samurai clan who have lost their masters or who never had one for whatever reason so these ronin because they're starving because they don't have any work because of the civil war and everybody's getting killed <laughs> so the villagers go to the village and they're like hey look out for the samurai who look like they're starving and beg them to help us and we'll pay them with rice and rice was a very valuable commodity back then peasants generally didn't eat white rice white rice was reserved for the elite um, so they are, you know, offering to pay these samurai in white rice and this the farmers will eat millet, which was the staple for the poor. So they go off and they got and they finally find these seven samurai to help. And eventually, spoiler alert, drive the bandits away. So that's good news. But um so the so the film Seven Samurai stars uh, a couple of Kurosawa's regular cohorts cohorts uh, Toshiro Mifune, who is in a number of his films, as well as Takashi Shimura, and they do a fantastic job. I don't know what to say about this movie that I haven't said already um, in his, in my general <laughs> rantings and ravings. <laughs> <laughs> about how much I love Kurosawa. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about him. Uh, the acting is fantastic. The story is fantastic. Uh, I love his use of of, um, of shadow and light. I love the imagery, the, the rain, um, the wind. Um, and I don't know what to say. It's just a really great story. What do you think of this, Tommy? This is the first time you've seen a Kurosawa movie. Yeah. Yeah, my first Kurosawa movie. Um, yeah, so he's a director who was very influential. Um, I'd heard that George Lucas was inspired to write the first Star Wars movie, partly due to Kurosawa. Kurosawa has a movie called The Hidden Fortress, and apparently the plot is very, very similar to Star Wars in that, you know, you have a couple of peasants who would be represented by C-3PO and R2-D2 in Star Wars, sort of bumbling peasants, a short one and a tall one who are always arguing, mm -hmm. and they sort of get caught in the middle of this thing, and they have to save a princess from a castle, from a dark lord type of affair. So, very influential director. And this movie, of course, as Shannon was saying, was remade into the famous Western um, the Magnificent Seven, so, and which I've seen many times, and I liked it a lot. So I was always curious to see this movie, you know, to see the comparisons. And it's very similar in plot. I would say this movie has a much slower pace, like the first hour is just sort of trying to convince all the samurai <laughs> to join them, and, you know, setting up all of the defenses during the growing season. They know the bad guys won't come back till you know, the crops are ready. So they actually have a long time to prepare. 
Uh, but once it does start up and, you know, all the interesting battle scenes, all the very interesting characters, character interactions, uh, you meet some very noble samurai, you meet some <laughs> very drunken samurai, you know. They <laughs> not sort so of, noble. <laughs> not so noble, yeah, they sort of <laughs> represent the whole gamut of the human condition. <laughs> so yeah, a very interesting movie, very lovely cinematography. I can see how... Uh, this guy was so in influential as a director. Mm. I liked it quite a bit. Yeah. And you know, samurai back then were not, like, they, people have this romantic image of samurai like they do of knights, but it was the same kind of thing. Like, there were some good people and there were some bad people, and sam some samurai just took advantage, and some samurai remained true to their, to their code. So, yeah. That really comes through in this film, too. All right, Shannon, so how many katanas out of five would you give this one? Well, you know me. I love Kurosawa. I'll give it a five. Five katanas out of five. Hooray for the peasants. And this that's another idea that came through from Kurosawa's leftist ideas and his Dostoevsky influence. He was very influenced by Dostoevsky, um, you know, he said that in, in to paraphrase the film it wasn't the samurai that won the day it was the peasants so there you go what about you tommy how many katanas uh, i'll give it four out of five i liked it quite a bit i did find you know the start was a little slow and I thought there was a weird plot point that sort of went nowhere. I thought mm. like they were trying to get these guns from the invaders and they're like, oh, we got to get a few of those guns. And it seems like they barely ever used those guns once they got them. So it's kind of like that was a plot point that kind of went nowhere. But other than that, very good movie. And I would highly recommend it to anybody. Hooray. So there you have it. There's our, there's our first year anniversary directorial picks. And thank you very, very much, everybody, for subscribing yeah, and thanks. watching. Much appreciated. Yep. And uh, hopefully we'll just grow in the future. And there you go. All right. We'll see you next time. On Random, Random Movie, Movie Time. time.